Hello, I'm Timothy Hobbs, and today I'm going to be doing another session of live coding for Vegan Buddies. Uh, last week, I was planning out the API for the Matrix bot, and this week I will be trying to set up a test framework. I'll be trying to get the, the Matrix bot uh, library that I've chosen, uh, the, the Rust library that I've chosen to be working, and I'll try to set it up so that I can actually test um, the matrix bot, because I mean, doing test-driven development, of course. And so, mm, you vegan buddies, I got a uh, where is it? Matrix Geographic User Index bot. And in my cargo.toml file, I have this matrix bot API library. And I guess what I need um, for the, the testing, for the testing and the development of this, is I need to. Um, File, save as. I'm not sure why the colors are all messed up there, but sometimes when you're using Xmonad, the themes don't really work out properly. I'm not really sure why, but in any case, I want to save this to Vegan Buddies Design and Bot development and testing .zoi. and what we're going to do here is we're going to set the paper style to plain and so if I have a command uh, So I have a matrix bot command, and a matrix bot command is basically just a private message that the matrix bot knows how to respond to. I'll put a title up here, make it big, maybe bold as well. So I'm not going to run my tests on the matrix.org website. So I need to have my own matrix server. So I'm going to have like a Docker compose. Uh, uh, I need to set those things back. Regular 12 Docker compose and this Docker Compose is going to contain the following things. It's going to contain a matrix server. It's going to contain the bot and it's going to contain down here Need to move this around so it looks nice.
Okay, and then it's going to contain a kind of mock or like this the script that just kind of replays a script and ex has expectations about what it should see. So it's going to be told what it should say and um, what it should expect. And I need it to like tell me, re re exit with an error if uh, it um, gets a message that it doesn't accept. And I, so, so it's going to probably read like a YAML file of uh, like a script. So it's going to be like, I, I don't know what to call it, you know, um, mock human maybe. Uh, so it's going to read a script. supposed to be a mask. This is supposed to be a bot. But it's not actually even a mock human, it's a mock client. Because humans aren't going to communicate with this bot directly, the client is. And then there's going to be a file, a script file, that has messages and expectations that this guy's going to read. And we're going to know that the test was successful if the mock client exits successfully. And if the mock client gets something unexpected, it'll just you'll be able to see the conversation somehow. So you need to have it so that this STD out of the mock client is visible. And there needs to be a good way of restarting this thing really, really quickly because it's a test framework. So So um how are we going to restart this guy really quickly? If we just restarted Docker Compose every time, that would be ter terrible, absolutely awful. So maybe the matrix server is going to run permanently and the bot is going to somehow connect to that matrix server and perhaps actually, actually this is going to be different than so like this, I, I guess, not really sure how I can get it so that I have more space here. Paper size. Uh, A4 landscape, uh-huh. And then if I select all this and move it back up, yes, okay. So then I want to move this all over here. And there's going to be a script. Test runner script and Maybe I should make this bigger. And then this is actually going to be bash because it's everyone's favorite shell for running exclusively in Docker containers.
Okay. So, with that said, I need to find a matrix server that runs really easily in Docker Compose. So, mm, I think I'm going to look that up on the internet. Not really sure where. Okay, this is on the network. Um, so clients, bots, SDKs. Um, Not sure where I found the list of matrix servers, but I remember I saw a list somewhere. And I remember that like some of them, like Synapse, required quite a few different components and others of them were specifically meant for running your own server and they didn't have so many uh, uh, like components, distributed components that it would be really difficult to run and maintain it itself. It's kind of funny that the last commit was commit five minutes ago and the CI is still running. So this is uh, the official matrix server, Synapse, and it's obviously heavily developed. Um, but I'm looking for, well, I can look at what it takes to um, install this. Maybe it'll be easy, but I seem to remember that Synapse is difficult to run yourself. Um, so, Synapse installation, installation instructions, and choosing your server name. That's a really weird thing to start it with. Um, Uh huh. So, so there's a. There's an official image. We'll see if it doesn't require. Cool. So it uses SQLite if you don't want to use Postgres. And. That doesn't look hard. That looks easy. Okay, I'm gonna try Synapse to see what happens. And yeah. Okay, I'll try Synapse. So, where were they saying how to use it? So I want to pull this guy out, this tab out into its own window. I want to push it over to where I had Emacs. Where is Emacs? Emacs, you should be here. Wait, uh-huh, I see. So now I can have Emacs and the web browser side by side. What the heck is going on? Maybe Docker Hub does not like it. Okay. So Docker Compose .yaml and Synapse. Synapse. 
and it wants a volume called data in the root. So I'm going to call that synapse data. I really should put like all of this, this cruft that I'm putting into um, the base directory into some subdirectory. So it'll be like docker compose cruft perhaps. And then I'll put that docker compose cruft uh, into docker ignore or git ignore docker compose craft like that and then I will change this make file so that it does make der, my, der minus p docker compose craft and then all of these are going to be, I guess I, with minus P, I don't even need to create that uh, directory. Synapse data. And now I've set up the volume and it also wants, okay, so I guess I'm going to have to scroll back in time and remind myself or figure out what that whole figuring out the server name thing was because right now I'm not going to be running it on a domain name. I'm going to be running it on localhost. Um, hopefully I can just do it like uh, like that, synapse name equals um, synapse reports dot environment variable and uh huh they don't actually say what that is so there synapse report stats mandatory yes or no whether to enable anonymous statistics reporting uh-huh I'm setting it to no because there's really no point in them getting any information about the fact that I'm running a test server somewhere I would just Dirt, add dirt to their data, basically. And then I want to set it image. And I want to set the image to matrix dot org synapse latest and and that should be about it right and then now that I've done that I'm going to do Docker compose YAML is invalid because synapse synapse environment contains an invalid type. It should be an object or array. Maybe I need to do that to make YAML happy. Um, what did I do wrong? 
Oh. Uh, that's better. So while this is building, I'm going to think about what I need to do in order to get it so that I'll just be able to quickly figure out if this is working. And I, in order to do that, I need to have a matrix client that I know works and try to connect it to this home server. And so actually I should be setting, I guess I should remount or, or map that port. So I'm going to go and put the ports here. I'll just use the default port. A008. And I guess I need to install a matrix client on my desktop in the virtual machine. So clients, I'm not sure. Uh-huh, I see. And I want Linux. That's cute. They have Ubuntu touch as an art, as a category. I don't know if Ubuntu Touch even still exists. Um, so I'm going to go and look Nix OS. Uh, fluffy chat. No packages found. Element. Element desktop. Okay. It's incredible how much of software development is installing and setting up tools, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so it's installing now, copying, blah, blah, blah. And once that's installed, I will I'll try to connect to this uh, Synapse server that I've just created at uh, Synapse test dot localhost, and we'll see if it works.
So this is currently taking a while to download, and in the meantime, I should think I should look up how the Matrix Bot API actually um, <clears throat> authenticates with the Matrix server. So uh, cargo creates. Well, I I can't remember which one is the squatted one. I need to go ahead and favorite that. Matrix bot API. And I should probably favorite this as well. And here examples with state.rs. Um, Bot config .toml, user password home server URL. Uh huh. So you first basically set up an account with basic auth, and this then loads. Uh huh. It loads the bot config from the file, and then it sets those things up in the settings object that's like provided by the library so you get this config struct and you just set these three settings or no wait it's not that way that's that's interesting uh, what is going on here so settings is the the toml file or was it toml yeah it was toml and why is there no dot toml here? It's weird. And so these three variables are set and uh-huh, then they're passed to bot dot run. And so we just need to define handler basically. And okay, cool. I think I understand how that works. It seems very simple. And it looks like everything has been loaded up. So now I need to go ahead and do element desktop and try to connect to this to this home server, edit, other home server, uh, synapse test dot local host. I'm hoping that I spell synapse test dot local host. Yes. Home server URL does not appear to be a valid matrix home server. Why? Um, so I need to go and look up, I guess that section of the uh, website was important. The one about deciding on the name. So, <laughs> it is important to choose the name for your server before you install Synapse because it cannot be changed later. Uh huh. The server name determines the domain part of user IDs for users on your server. These will be all. These will all be of the format user at my dot domain dot name. It also determines how other matrix servers will reach yours for federation. For a test configuration, set this to the home s host name of your server. 
For a more production-ready setup, you will probably want to specify your domain, example.com, rather than a matrix-specific host name here. In the same way that your email address is probably user at example.com rather than user at example user at email.example.com. But doing so may require more advanced setup. See setting up federation. Um, that didn't help at all actually because my host name is like local host, isn't it? I'm really confused. Um like some like my host name here is NixOS, but uh huh, that actually works. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting, but it's still not like accepting it I'm confused I'm super confused what's doing what am I doing wrong And I'm also really confused where Firefox went like the one where the article that I was reading just now went. Oh, it is this. I, I don't know why I, I was confused, but in any case, um, Uh-huh, maybe they want the port. Um, 
Okay, uh, now I'm completely confused. Um, I'm also getting really annoyed by the fact that in this VM I don't have the window switcher utility installed, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, Not really sure what it was called. Um, but I can find it by opening up xmonad. Go to menu. And where is go to menu? Defined? It's it's defined in some library somewhere? Confused. Uh, I need to install D menu, okay? So So my connection is unstable. Hopefully it's not breaking out. Okay, cool. So now it's working and so I wanted to look up why is this saying home server URL does not appear to be a valid matrix home server? And that's not something that you can even... Uh, copy and paste. So it seems like maybe it's actually trying to connect to that server and failing. I don't know. Well, that won't work because obviously uh, I only have the port 8008 in, uh, cast through out of the Docker thing and it wants to run something on 8080 or 80. I'm not really sure. Um, but 
does it say something about like listening on uh-huh so it doesn't even run the config file data home server dot yaml does not exist uh-huh so I need to create a data home server dot yaml file so where was I here Mm-hmm. So I needed to set like entry point uh, generate maybe. That's, I guess. I'll try it. Generate executable file not found in path or unknown. Um, I guess that's because this is using one of those weird entry points. What are they called? I don't even remember. Um, Docker has the ability to make it so that like the Docker containers have a default executable and then the extra arguments are passed to that default executable and I need to go ahead and look up with the name of that thing so I can figure out how to so entry point is start py and then I want to pass start py the generate command so I want to do start py generate. It exited though. Docker ps. Now I'm really confused. It's not running. Why isn't it running? Doesn't say any errors. Okay, so I ran generate and now I want to like not run generate. I'm confused. Are these errors or is this like normal? Info, 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 okay. I guess I'll go back to element and see if it somehow magically works. It doesn't like me, it still doesn't like me. Error, I don't like you. Okay. Certainly noisy enough. Failed to listen on zero zero zero. 
continuing because listening on what? Synapse now listening on TCP port 8008. And I don't see anything more saying that it's stopped listening on 8008. But element still does not like me. That is confusing. Well, this is a really bad way of testing things because it's not providing me with any feedback whatsoever. Um, Uh-huh. So it seems like it wants to run a web server as well as this 8008 port thing. Or is the web server running on port 8008? It seems to me that it's not immediately failing when I do that, but it's not loading either. And so I guess I can try exposing ports 8080 and 8080 to see, wait, this is HTTPS and I want to go to HTTP because obviously it works, Synapse is running, uh-huh. So, Finally, finally, I'm, I'm in. Okay, so now they say that I need to set up a user And what do they say about the here? Do they say something about setting up users? Generating an admin user. The home, the home server must be configured with the registration shared secret option set. Um, uh huh, I see. Uh, 
minus a minus u test something like that and so now I've set up a user okay cool and now I need to document this process a little bit and automate it a little bit so that other people that want to follow in my footsteps won't have the same problems as I did. So the first thing that I needed to do was run generate and um, so that can be automated by um, doing what does it need to be done um, not really sure I, I'm a little bit concerned about why twitch is telling me that the stream is unstable is it unstable am I cutting out here my laptop is certainly seeming to bake a bake itself. Um, so where was I? Um, I wanted to automate the process of setting this up. So the first thing that needs to be done is Okay, so this can probably be put into that make file. Something like that. Uh, of course, I need to be in the correct directory. Missing step. Um, did I forget to put in tabs? I forgot to do tabs. The only file format in the world that distinguishes, in brief, distinguishes between tabs and multiple spaces, I think. I remember back in the day, some text editors would automatically insert tabs but wouldn't convert spaces um, when you typed spaces. And so you could end up with this invisible problem that some of the <laughs> indentation was tabs and some of the indentations with spaces. I think that's all been resolved now. Um, so Docker compose minus D up maybe. Is this really going to like resend everything? That's so inefficient. <sighs> Someday I'll send a pull request to Docker to fix that. <laughs> um, I 
I'm still not seeing like how do I or do I need it to be like that I don't remember minus D Okay, so it seems that this has worked, and why is it telling me stops containers and removes containers? Um, uh, it doesn't like the fact that the synapse is here. So I'm gonna go ahead and test that again. This should be completely indempotent or whatever you call it. Though you can run it as many times as you want and you get the same result. Uh, certainly with the desire here and then I'll want to create an automatic automated thingamajig yeah it seems like everything is doing what I expect it to and not sure where I ran that uh-huh I ran it somewhere here didn't I the the thing that created the f the users or where did I run it Here, here it is. Um, so yeah, so this I need to also add to the make file. I'm not sure whether I should have these pseudos here or not, I guess. Like it depends on the user's configuration, whether they're using Docker and they're a member of the Docker group or if they're a member of the pseudo group, which are pretty much identical. So it's probably better to be a member of the pseudo group, but I'm usually the member of a Docker group just because I'm lazy to write pseudo. Um, so this, but instead of creating a username test with a, uh, so it, I'm going to create two users, right? Because I'm going to have the bot and the mock client. And so one is going to be named bot. They can both have the same password. That's fine. And again, I'm going to have the problem with the tabs. Not sure why everything's purple now in there. So after this, I'm going to um, go ahead and try to set up the very, very basic uh-huh. Well, that was moronic. There we go. Um, a very, very basic script that's just going to uh, connect the matrix bot API so that I can see if it's actually working. But I might do that tomorrow because this is already about an hour and it will probably take me another half hour to do that. Um, considering how how lucky I get with like various installation errors and such. So 
that's all for today. So next week, I'm going to be setting up uh, the the mock the this mock client and the bot and the script for launching those. So yo got to commit this why is it compiling emacs sql sqlite binary what the frick i'm really confused like emacs is frozen and it says that it's compiling some binary i didn't ask it to compile some binary i asked it to launch git status or maybe I mistyped something, I'm not sure. Okay, so. Mm. It's doing it again. What is this? I'm so confused. Why is it compiling the SQLite binary? I really don't understand why that's being installed. Like, nothing against the developer, but I just don't understand why that was l running at the time that it was running. Okay, so this commit is add um, synapse matrix home server add test matrix cool so that and i also noticed that um what's the unstage change here I wonder if that should have been staged. Um, I also noticed that um, when I was trying to publish the, the live stream last week, or maybe yesterday, <laughs> I'm a little bit behind in schedule. Uh, when I was trying to publish it, Git was complaining that it wasn't able to pull, pull in the Portio sub uh, git submodule, which seems to suggest that I forgot to push some commit from somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and check that out right now. Web the themes portio git remote git push origin master everything up to date. Uh huh. So now I'm really confused. Uh, not GV. And get three bit.
Did I really forget to push that many commits? Interesting. Anyways, um, I'm going to be trying to figure out how, why I wasn't able to clone this repo. And it seems to be working fine here. So in any case, um, it's, an, it's over an hour. The stream's been over an hour. And I'm going to be packing up for today. And next week, I'll try to set up um, the mock client and uh, something on the matrix bot side of things. Okay. And if any of you actually watch to this point and you know of some like really good mock matrix client for testing purposes, then that would save me some work perhaps. <laughs>